redeemed how I love to proclaim it's redeemed by the blood of the Lamb redeemed through his infinite mercy his child and forever I am redeemed 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 by the blood of the Child and forever I am. We sing it again. Redeemed how I love. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed to His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed. Redeemed. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. Yeah. I know that the light of His presence with me doth continually redeem, redeem. I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the thing. Hallelujah. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the land of the land. Redeemed. His child and forever I am. I know I shall see. I know I shall see in his beauty. The king in whose law I delight. Who lovingly guarded my footsteps. And given me song in the day. you that song makes me so happy you know and it, there's a joy when you sing that song yeah it's like oh <laughs> you sing the last verse again amen it's, it's like a happy song isn't it it's like oh and look we feel free and dance like I can't dance because I have the guitar I'll be like <laughs> so just yeah here we go I know I shall see I know I shall see in his beauty Lovingly guarded my footsteps and given me song and praise. Ready, 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 my little land of the land. Ready, ready, his child and forever. One more time, ready.
was my cross he bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your good indeed of all the glory all the honor thank you jesus thank you lord amen good morning everybody good morning. to our second service we had a lovely time this morning praise god praise god i was just thinking of that verse in matthew eleven twenty-eight, the one that's on our billboard and just the way what what jesus uses as a way to draw us to himself. He speaks of himself. He says, 
you know the, the verse that says, come to me. So he invites us to come. But what he says about himself is what he uses to, to bring us. And he says, I am meek and I'm lowly in heart. Or I'm gentle and I'm lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. So he tells us what he's like. And that's what he uses as a way to draw us to himself. So I don't know who that's for, but maybe you're thinking that God's against you. Or maybe you're thinking that, you know, he's, he's going to be wagging the finger at you. You know, but what he uses to bring us, he says, I am gentle and I'm lowly in heart. And he says, when you come, you'll find rest for your soul. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And it's great to know what Jesus is like. And to have that revelation of what his character and his nature is really, 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 really like. Something the enemy works overtime at is um, trying to distort our view of God. This is one of his main things. He's all the time sowing lies into our minds about what God's like. Especially when you miss it and you fail and you do sin. Christian sin. (laughs) Do you know that? We do miss it. We come short and we fail. And important for you to know what Jesus is like. I quoted a scripture this morning from from Hebrews chapter 4. In the invitation that Jesus gives us to come to the throne of grace. He says, we do not have a high priest. I'll paraphrase it. He's saying, we have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses. Because he was all pints tempted as we are. In other words, I was on the earth and he was tempted as we are. Yet without sin, and that's what he uses to invite us. He says, I can sympathize with what you're going through. And he uses that to say, come to the throne of grace and receive mercy and find grace in times of need. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for what you're really like, Lord. I thank you for your beautiful nature and your beautiful character and how much you love us. And even as your word says, you love us with an everlasting love. And with loving kindness, you will draw us. And you will build us and we'll be rebuilt in you, Father. And we bless you and we thank you for that this morning. Lord, we know, Jesus, you are the living word. Lord, will you come and touch every heart here with your very word this morning? I pray for the Holy Spirit to come and anoint this word to people's hearts, to your people's hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So just continuing really from last week, I talked about the importance of um, the inner man. That Paul said to the prayer in the church in Ephesus that we would be strengthened with might by his spirit in our inner man. We talked about us having an inner man and an outer man. Corinthians says our outer man is perishing. Amen? Yeah. You agree with that? Yeah. And our inner man is being renewed day by day. God is more interested in our inner man and what's going on on the inside than what's actually happening on the outside. Because if we get right on the inside, it will actually affect our environment. Amen. We talked about that last week. We can only affect our environment when our environment is right. That our private world, what's going on in our thought life, what's going on in our heart, how we are on the inside. So we do well to give attention to the inside. Amen. The Lord, the Lord does not see as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance. Where does the Lord look? On the heart. The Lord looks on the heart. God said that to the prophet Samuel when he was going to prophesy, or he was going to anoint David to, to be the successor for Saul. Look on the inside. What's on the inside? And that's where God is focused on us. How are we on the inside? So we talked about that. Giving attention to our inner life is so important. And just to add one way that we can build up our inner life, and we can, Jude chapter 20 says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. That God gives us the gift. It's called the gift of speaking in tongues. And the gift of tongues uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, for he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. That we have the ability and we have the spiritual gift that God offers to actually give us that we can actually edify ourselves on the inside. You know, uh, Paul pr- said in, in the same chapter, verse 18, 
I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. There's been lots of debates about speaking in tongues, and there's been, you know, you might have heard our tongues is of the devil. You know, I've heard that, and and um, but I I got saved, and when I got saved, about a week or two after I got saved, a brother in the house I was in, she came and shared with me about the Holy Spirit, and he prayed for me, and he laid hands on me, and the Holy Spirit came upon me, and I got the gift of speaking in tongues, and I began to just pray out this beautiful language that came out, and that's been a real asset to me in my walk over the years. I was only t- saying this morning. Uh, I just woke up and I was lying on the bed this morning, just head back in the pillow, and I just begin to pray in tongues. Just begin to, you know, you're not that spiritual when you wake up, are you? <laughs> Sometimes we're not. You know, I just, you know, you got all negative stuff running around inside you. And, you know, as Pat said to me one time, you're as spiritual as a bag of crisps. Sometimes when you wake up, you know, you don't feel like you're a Christian. You don't feel saved. You're going, what on earth am I doing? Being a pastor, what? <laughs> You know, and but you begin to pray in tongues, and I felt it this morning, just that rising, just that rising of spiritual power and spiritual strength begins to come on the inside, you know. And I had the gift of speaking in tongues, and that guy, Howard, laid hands on me, and there used to be a group going around London, and they used to think it was their mission to go onto the streets and tackle all the Christians who were on the streets, and we used to go to Leicester Square, and we'd be down Friday and Saturday nights, and their mission was to come and tell Christians how to get their life in order. There were believers, and they'd say, you have to be baptized a certain way. Were you baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? to try to trick you, you know, knowing that maybe you had a Catholic background. Were you baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? you say, yeah. Well, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And they were hung up on these, these kind of things. And one thing was tongues. Oh, tongues is wrong, and tongues, you're, you know. I says, well, I already got the gift, so it's too late. I got the gift, and I'm using it. And I'm praying in tongues, but speaking in tongues, there's there's different operations of it. And sometimes people get this confused, but that's where sometimes it can get confusing about, you know, people say, well, I need if I pray in tongues, I need an interpreter of that. And that's only within a church meeting if someone's given a message. But there's a gift and there's an operation in praying in tongues that you can use to actually edify yourself. That you can lie on your bed or wherever you are, in your car, if you're driving. I do it sometimes if I'm on a long journey. I'll make a decision if I'm, if I'm on my own. You know, I'll make a decision. I'm going to pray in tongues now. And I just keep praying in the Spirit. And for the specific purpose of edifying your inner man. And you're looking after your inner man. Some of us go to the gym and we're disciplined and we go three times a week or whatever you do. And, you know, you look after your outer man. But, you know, we can do that in the inner man. We can make a decision. I'm going to pray in the Spirit. I'm going to pray in tongues every day. You know, it's a spiritual gift that comes. And God gives us these gifts so we can look after ourselves. So we can actually look after ourselves spiritually. Sometimes we're praying for stuff and we wonder why it's not happening. God sometimes says, well, I've given you the ability to actually make that happen. You can be praying for things in the Christian walk, and sometimes we already have it, what we're praying for. So we've got that gift of praying in tongues that we actually edify ourselves. Paul says, you know, he prayed in tongues more than anyone else. And if you have that gift, I encourage it, because sometimes we we leave it to one side. We don't use it because we get busy in other things. We get, you know, we get busy with other Christian activities, and we can that can be kind of lying dormant. It has with me on many of occasions. You know, it can be sitting there and you've heard about it and you just need to be reminded. So that's what I'm doing. If you have that gift and you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, just remind you to keep praying in the Spirit. Keep practicing. Keep praying in tongues. And if you haven't got it, I encourage you, as Paul says, desire spiritual gifts. Desire it. Desire this gift of speaking in tongues and come and talk to some of the leaders and they can just pray with you, lay hands on you, encourage you of how to pray in that. You know, you don't need it to be a Christian or you don't need it to be saved. But it's a very powerful tool for you to build yourself up and to get strong in your inner man. Amen. So that was one way we talked about waiting upon the Lord being another way. And, um, you know, Jesus said, Mark 16, 17, these signs will follow those who believe. Amen. They will cast out demons, and they will speak with tongues, to speak with new tongues. Amen. So I encourage you to keep praying in the Spirit. I just want to read on further on to that prayer in Ephesians 
chapter 3, that we would be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That Christ would dwell in our hearts through faith. All of Paul's emphasis here was upon Christ inside us. He was talking, he was praying specifically about what's going on on the inside of the believers in Ephesus. Paul was more concerned about what was going on in their heart and what was going on on the inside so that Christ would dwell in their hearts by faith. And you know, that word dwell is abide. And some translation says that Christ would make his home in your hearts and that Christ would be welcome in our heart. That he would feel when he comes with his presence upon you that he's actually welcome. Have you ever gone anywhere to a home or into a company of people and you know you're there and you're not welcome? You know, (laughs) you don't stay very long, do you? If you knock on someone's door, you kind of pick it up. Maybe it's the wrong time. Mm, Not welcome here. You know, (laughs) Anne is laughing. (laughs) It happens, don't it? Because you might knock on the door the wrong time or you might call. But you know, when Christ comes to our house, what do you think would make him welcome in our home, in our heart? Ask yourself that question. What welcomes Christ? What makes him feel at home when he comes to manifest his presence with us? Or you could ask yourself, what makes him feel unwelcome when he comes alongside us? Is there some activity? Is there something? Is there something going on inside us that we're saying, no, you're not welcome? Do you know, Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's talking to the church here. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears the knock, hears my voice, and opens the door, I will come in to him, and I will dine with him, and him with me. So he's given us a picture that when he comes to our hearts, that he knocks. And he, he's looking for the welcome. He's looking for us to actually be, to have a welcoming heart when we hear it. I grew up in Largeville, and we used to get a knock on the door every Friday night. It was Mr. Clear. You might remember Mr. Clear, the John from Green Street. Anyway, he was an old man back then, but he, it was for the rent. It was five pound and a penny. We used to pay the rent every week. The rent man, it was what we called him. And you know, some, some weeks, my mother would say, shh. There were loads of kids running everywhere, running all over the kitchen. Shh. So we have to stay quiet for a minute. Knock again. She wouldn't have the money to pay him. So he wasn't welcome. So there was no going to open the door. Now, some weeks, she'd send us out with a five pound and a penny. And we paid him, and we used to be looking at his big leather bag, and he'd have all these bundles of notes. You know, you're a young fella, you look at all this money. It was massive. But, you know, some weeks, we'd hear the knock, but he wasn't welcome. And I wonder, is, does Christ get that from us sometimes when he comes and he's knocking? Remember what he's looking for. He's looking to come and dine. Or Pat reminded me at the break, the word in the Amplified is restore. Is another, when he comes, he's actually coming in, not to condemn or to point a finger or to, you know, to have harsh words with you. He's coming to dine. You know when you dine with someone, you're having that fellowship and you're enjoying that time of communion. And as Pat said, he's coming to restore. When you sit with Christ and you actually welcome him and you open the door, You hear first, you hear the knock, you open the door, and you welcome him in. That Christ would dwell in our hearts, would be welcome in our hearts by faith. And you know what happens then? Paul prayed it, that we would be rooted and grounded in love. This is what happens. When we fellowship with Christ and we allow him to come and we have that intimate time of fellowship with him, He comes and he causes, just that time with him causes us to, as the rest of the prayer says, to know, to experience the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. So that's what he comes to do. Or in other words, he comes to give you 
a spiritual kiss. He comes to love on you. Do you know what 1 John says? We love him because he first loved us. And to, to love on Christ, one of the definitions of worship is to bow down and kiss the Son. When we're worshiping him, there's a sense of that intimacy where we're bound down and we're bestowing our kiss upon him. But we can only love him. We can only kiss him when we first receive his kiss. So let me ask you a question. How is your kiss? Are you experiencing that, that kiss, that love of Christ in your inner man? This was Paul's prayer, and it's, I'm, I'm amazed as I journey on the Christian walk how many believers journey on and without that. And you know, the Christian walks become so much easier and so much more meaningful. And so there's so much more life in it when you're actually, what you're doing, you're doing out of a motivation of, I've received the kiss from the sun. Your time of worship, you don't have to be exhorted to get into a time of worship. You don't need patience to say, do this, do this, stand up, confess this. You know, your eyes are closed and the minute the sun goes, you're there. You're just, you're just, you're just wanting to worship on him. You're just wanting to, in a sense, kiss him. Why? Because you've experienced the love of Christ in your spirit man, which passes knowledge. And it goes on to say then that we will be filled with all the fullness of God. What is the fullness of God? The love of Christ. That's what it says there. That when we experience that love, that is the, the love of Christ is the fullness of God. And this is what Paul is praying for the church in Ephesus, that they'll be strengthened with his might in the inner man. And they'll be at a place that they welcome that knock when it comes. And they'll hear it. And Christ will be welcome. And then when he's welcome, you know what I'm talking about. You know when you experience the love of Christ? Hands up those who know what I'm talking about. You've experienced the love and that touch in your heart. You can't put words into it. There is no other natural experience on this earth can come close to it. And this is what um, Paul is praying for. So it's all about what's going on on the inside. Because if we don't give attention to the inside, we're just giving attention to the outside. We can just go on a religious treadmill. And we're doing all the right things. We're going here. We're going to the meetings. We're even reading our Bible. We're even telling others about him. We're even giving. We're, we're trying to do all the things that Christians do. But we're missing out on the most important thing. Where God is looking. On the heart. Amen. So let me ask you two questions. How's your inner man? And how's your kiss? Amen. Are you experiencing that? Amen. Let's just stand to our feet and we'll just pray. You know, God loves us so much. And, you know, he just, the whole purpose of redemption and reconciliation was for this. The whole purpose of the cross, the whole purpose of Jesus coming was that he could restore this place of fellowship with us. That he could just come in and dine with us. However that is for you. You could be driving the tractor. You could be in your car. You could be in your closet. Sitting at your desk. Going for a walk in the woods. But that he's come and he's... That fellowship with him has been restored. That you're, you're, you're just fellowshipping with Jesus. And this was the whole purpose of the redemption. So Lord, we just thank you today, Lord. Lord, we just thank you that you look on the inner... You look on the heart, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, for your help for each one of us today, Lord. That, God, we will reach a place in our hearts that we are strengthened with might by your Spirit. Lord God. Lord, I pray you'll give us ears again to hear, Lord, that 
knock, to hear your voice. And Lord, help us to go and open that door and allow you to come in and call us into fellowship. And Lord, for us, each one of us, Lord, afresh even to receive that spiritual kiss from your spirit, Lord. That we will know the love of Christ. That we will experience it in our inner man, Lord. That touch from heaven. That touch from your presence. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for fellowship. Thank you for coming to dine with us. Or will you give us sensitive hearts and sensitive ears to hear you calling, to hear you knocking? That, Lord, you will restore that sensitivity to our hearts, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Andy. That was wonderful. Be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. So, so patience is going to... And Pat, on the drums there, we're going to have a little bit more worship. But in the meantime, we just pray the peace of God that passes all understanding be upon you and your families this week. And have a wonderful week. And be blessed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, patience. Jesus. 
It's all. 